and the Tennessee state records show that Smitty has not made a, a child support payment to Amber's mother in over nine months. But he's trying to impress his daughter with this great sacrifice. And just as Amber is not impressed with her father's sacrifice, God is not impressed with sacrifices when the heart isn't right. Her, Amber's father's heart was not right. And the Pharisees, their hearts were not right either. Jesus says in verse 7 that the Pharisees worshipped God in vain. It was meaningless what they were doing. All their efforts. They washed their hands in vain because their hearts were not right. Now let me just stop for a minute and, and quit throwing stones at the Pharisees and, and let's look at, at ourselves for just a moment. Because this is a big trap for us as Christians. It's very easy for us religious people to obey all the right rules and to believe all the right doctrines, to say the right things about God, but to not have our hearts in it. That's a very easy trap for us to fall into. We make sure that we don't watch certain movies and that we don't say certain words or that we do certain activities like go to church and read the Bible. But at the same time, we're neglecting our heart and, and our relationship with God. Jesus goes on to say in, in verse 15, nothing outside a man can make that person unclean. Rather, it is what comes out of the man that makes him unclean. Jesus is telling us that true religion is not a matter of following rules. True religion is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. And all the way back in the Old Testament, God was teaching this truth. Uh, the Bible says in Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, says, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesus tells us in this passage that it's not contamination from the outside that makes someone unclean. It's not touching a plate that a Gentile touched that makes us unclean and defiled before God. But it's not being right before God in our hearts. Remember, Jesus was so upset with the Pharisees here because they were pe perpetuating a wrong understanding of our problem, of the human problem. Our problem is not corruption from the outside. Our problem is the corruption that's already in our hearts. Our problem is that we were all born with a sin nature. We were born with that propensity to sin. And that's what makes us unclean before God. And we all have that problem. We all have that problem. And the cure isn't running water over our hands to make God happy or to be pure. The only cleansing that deals with our problem is the blood that Jesus offered on our behalf. The only way, it's, it's only when we ask Jesus to forgive our sins because of his death on the cross that we become acceptable to God and we become clean. Jesus was mad at the Pharisees because they were teaching a wrong understanding of human nature. Our job is not to keep the dirt out. Our job is to deal with the dirt that's already there. Jesus was also mad at the Pharisees because this wrong idea about clean and unclean affected how we relate to God. Because there's no greater danger for us as Christians than to think that we have a healthy relationship with God because we go to church and because we read the Bible and because we pray. That's a great trap for us to fall into. Because we're doing all the right things, we must be okay with God. Because we're washing our hands before we eat, God must be happy with us. But we can take the very things and this is, this is the danger here. We can take the very things that draw us close to God and we can turn them into rituals that we do without thinking. We can read the Bible without having our heart in it. We can, we can go to church without really loving God. We can even teach Sunday school without even being close to God. 
We can take those things, those disciplines that help draw us close to God, and we can turn them into empty rituals like the Pharisees did. Two people can read their Bible every day, and for one person, it's meaningless. It's, it's done in vain. It means nothing to God. And for the other person, it's that life-sustaining relationship. Two people can give money to the poor. And for one person, it's done in vain. It's meaningless. And for the other person, it, it's an act of devotion and worship to God. The actions aren't what matters. It's the heart that matters. That's what Jesus is saying here. We can do all the right things for all the wrong reasons, and it means nothing. Jesus is saying, this is all about your heart and my heart and where it is with the Lord. Now, I want you to realize that, that if you're struggling with where your heart is, as I do, uh, that doesn't mean you're an especially bad Christian. If you find your heart this morning away from the Lord or not where you would like it to be, um, because as the hymn writer says, our hearts are prone to wander. Our hearts are prone to wander. As Christians, when you accept Jesus as your Savior, your heart is constantly being drawn back to the world, being drawn back to that sinful nature. And every day, we need to recommit ourselves and recommit our hearts to and dedicate them to the Lord and to following the Lord and loving the Lord and serving the Lord for all the right reasons. And so what I want to do now is lead us in a time of, of prayer where we may repent, where we, where we lay our hearts bare before the Lord and say, Lord, is my heart right before you? I know that many times when my heart's not right with the Lord, it's because I've got some sin in my life that I haven't repented of, that I'm allowing to be there. And so maybe ask the Holy Spirit if there's any sin that you need to, to address in your life. Let's uh, quietly individually do business with the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, this morning, again, we, we say that and we mean that we do not want to be like the Pharisees. We don't want our, our actions to be in vain. We want our hearts to be right before you. We want our hearts to, to genuinely love you and genuinely seek to honor you. And that those good, those good works, Lord, would then be ways of, of honoring you and praising you and not just be vain actions. We thank you, Lord, that, that Jesus died on the cross so that we can come to you and repent and you forgive us and you cleanse us and you wash us white as snow and you remove those things from us. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would not only uh, cleanse us, but you would empower us to live lives that are wholly devoted to you. We thank you for the forgiveness. We thank you for the power. We thank you for your love that you lavish on us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.